bit of time of, uh, for Q&A. Uh, I'll take this earlier. So to start off, uh, we had asked for a couple of questions from, the, uh, from our members before they joined. So what I would like to do is I would like to start with a few questions that came in uh, during the registration process. And then I'll come in and get a question uh, from live. All right, so we'll start off with uh, one that you sort of like touched on. And that's about positioning size once an opportunity has been identified. Okay, so the, the question is how do, we, how do we actually size our positions? So it's, it's very simple. It's actually quite simple. So we're interested in companies from A1 down to B3. But an A1, we believe, is better than a B3. So we want to put more of our capital into the A1s. So an A1 starts off with a maximum size of 7.5%. So we start with 7.5%, then we whittle it down, so we might have a whole bunch of A1s that meet the criteria in our portfolio, but some are cheaper than others. So some are trading at a bigger margin of safety than others. So the one that has the largest margin of safety still could have the biggest position size, the one with the smallest margin of safety gets whittled down. It might be whittled down to 5% or 4% or 3%. And then the last criteria for determining the position size is liquidity. So we'll then look at how, how much volume, how quickly we can get out of a position if everything goes wrong. We're trying to cover ourselves for the situation where we've made a mistake or the company comes out with a downgrade and it looks like it's not temporary, it's permanent and we have to change our view, we have to get out. Those companies that we can get out of instantly, because the volume is so high, they'll retain that 5% or maybe 7.5% position. But those where we have to throttle because of liquidity, they might get down to 2 or 3%. And that's the answer to that question. That's how we determine position size. Now, it's algorithmic. There's no human input. We don't sort of, you know, suck it and see or put our finger out in the wind and say, you know, this should be a bigger position. We follow very strictly that criteria. So when we do make a mistake, and, and inevitably we'll make more of them, we've made some already and we'll, we'll make a lot more. Um, in fact, I think I'll make every mistake by the time we're done. Um, uh, you know, we, we're, we're, not, we're not, the team goes on, the team continues to play. We, we've sidelined or benched one of our players. Um, they've been red carded, if you like, but the whole team can still win the game, the remaining members of the team. And this is something that I haven't seen now, I don't get many, many people saying, oh, I'm so glad I only put 3% into that position, Roger, it didn't go well. Usually it's, you know, I had you know, a large part of my portfolio in that stock and it's gone badly. We don't have a large part of our portfolio in any stock and you shouldn't either. So what I'm talking about is the initial position sizing. Then what, of course, might happen is that the shares double. You know, you might have 15% of your portfolio if nothing else has changed You've got 15% of your portfolio now in, in a stock. What do you do there? Well, we limit it to 20%. So it's never got there because often other things are moving up as well at the same time. But we have an absolute maximum position size of 20%. That means that, means that if it goes beyond that, we're trimming the position. We're selling as it's going up. Now, the problem with that, of course, is Peter Lynch talked about cutting, cutting your roses to let the weeds through. And there is a risk that that happens, but what we hope is that we've got no weeds. You know, what we trust is that our process has got to a point where they're all roses of varying quality. No, we don't have stop losses. So how do you cut your weeds and Okay, we, we base our investment philosophy on biz, owning businesses. We don't own stocks. The whole idea of a stop loss is that you're trading a stock you're trading bits of paper that wiggle on a screen, and when the wiggle goes down too much, you're out. What I discovered many, many years ago working for BT uh, on their trading desk, on the proprietary trading desk, is that there is no stop loss strategy that beats a buy and hold strategy when you've got it right. right. Stopping out, because inevitably there's not a straight line. The stock doesn't go up in a straight line, it corrects, and then it starts going up again. And what we found is that there isn't a stop loss strategy that's better than just the buy and hold. So what we do is we buy and hold. We sell not when the stock price has gone down. We sell when the quality of the business has changed or its prospects have deteriorated. If the prospects deteriorate, we're out irrespective of what the share price does. Now your, your response to that might be, but what if you've bought it at $5 
and it's now at three, and then you find out some information that says the prospects have deteriorated. We only put two and a half percent in that position. We're going to get out. We'll take the loss. And, and we still believe our story? We'll buy more. The market is not right. This is really, really important. People assume that when they buy a stock and it goes down, the market's right and they're wrong. The market is often wrong. They, I mean, there's, there's examples every day of where the market has got it completely wrong. You know, Macmillan Shakespeare dropped to $7, dropped to $7 when, um, when Kevin Rudd came out and said, we think the FBT scheme on car leases is a rort uh, and we're going to shut it down. You know, and the shares went to 7 No one was going to re-elect Kevin Rudd. He was never going to get that legislation up. The market got it wrong. We were the biggest buyer of that stock at $7.20 that day. You know, a few months later it was at $13. Don't believe the market's right just because the share price goes in a different direction. The share price changes every day, but the value of the business doesn't change as frequently as the share price. The share price is going up and down. The share price of a stock goes down because Joy needs to renovate her bathroom. So she needs 50 grand. It's a good bathroom. So she <laughs> needs $50,000. So she's got to sell a stock. And the share price that day goes down because there was no one who want, wanted to buy it. Didn't mean anything changed, but you're looking at the share price going, oh, my stop loss is hit. I've got to get out. That's crazy because Joy's renovating a bathroom, your stop loss went off. <laughs> That's what happens in the stock market. That's why I don't like stop losses. 